All right, guys, how are you doing tonight? Uh, welcome to Etienne's History and Heritage 101. Um, I felt like it was a big need for us to kind of uh, rehash History and Heritage again. Um, I know that everyone here has pretty much gotten to History and Heritage, but I felt like uh, it is always a great thing for us to be able to go back over it, just in case of some notes that we missed. Um, so, everybody going through rookie camp here, um, uh, you guys have all been through a couple of things, right? You guys have been through the $500 handshake, you guys have been through who Bill Bowerman is, you guys have been through Steve Fon Prefontaine, you guys, we've been through all these people, right? But I feel like one guy that we continue to miss on is Jeff Johnson, right? Okay, so who can tell me two things, two things that Jeff Johnson has done at his time at night? What do we got? Two things. What, what was that? He made the Nike name. He made the Nike name. All right, that's one. All right. What else do we have? Yes. He was the first employee. Okay. Those two things right there kind of sum up this man's career. Right? In the 20 years he's been with Nike, I feel like we pull any other associate from a Nike store, and we asked him who Jeff Johnson is, and come up with two things. First employee, and he made the Nike name. My goal, by the end of this presentation, is for you guys to not only know those two things and be able to talk to those two things with anybody in the company, but also to know how magnificent this man was and why he is actually called the spirit of Nike, right? Because we have two other things. We have Jeff Johnson, who's the spirit of Nike. We have the soul, who is... Steve Prefontaine. Steve Prefontaine. Thank you very much, Steve Prefontaine. And then we have the fire of Nike, who is... John McEnroe. John McEnroe. Okay, perfect. So we're all good to go? Um, Jeff Johnson, reading the magazine, really got into running, pushed himself all through high school. Senior year of high school, he ran a 440 and a one mile. 440 and a one mile. Okay, just to put it in perspective, because that's extremely fast. This is a big mall, right? You guys have all walked the mall, okay? Bags aside, if you guys didn't have any bags, you guys were running one lap around the mall, that's one mile. All right? Who thinks they can do that under eight minutes? Honestly, under eight minutes. A couple people. How about six minutes? Ooh, I need to get to five minutes. All right, five minutes now, okay? So we have, we have a guy who was able to run one mile, so one lap around this mall, and 440. That's extremely fast, right? So that accolade actually got him scouted to the University of Colorado, uh, University which I've actually uh, grown up here, uh, wonderful city, but uh, Colorado ended up scouting him on a full ride scholarship, really, really fast guy, obviously, to run a 440 and a miler. Just to put that in perspective as well, guys, who this guy is, a 440 and a miler back then was really important because there was no running technology, right? There was no gait analysis, there was no wound or lawn cushioning, it was leather and spikes. That's it. The guy ran 440 in there, right? So took his talents to Colorado. After running a couple of years for Colorado, he wanted to try himself and uh, actually calls it that he wanted to go on a whim and wanted to take his talents to Stanford. Um, so he actually got accepted to Stanford, even ran for Stanford a couple of years. Little did he know, uh, going to Stanford, that that was actually going to be his uh, pre-Nike destiny as we had also one other guy that also went to Stanford. All right, so Jeff meets Nike. Okay, so Jeff was running his couple of years at Stanford, uh, graduates, decides to pursue his master's there for business. In the middle of that, he starts running with this guy named Philip Knight. You might know who Philip Knight is? Weird guy, I'm sure nobody's ever heard of him in their life. Uh, so, we started wrong with Philip Knight. Uh, Phil Knight was also pursuing his uh, master's at uh, Stanford. And while they were running, um, he really saw the passion that Jeff Johnson had for running. Uh, go to the coffee shop, and that's when he tells us about VRX. Okay, remember BRS, Blue Ribbon Sports, right? That's when he hashes out Blue Ribbon Sports. Uh, at this point in time, not too much is rolling with Blue Ribbon Sports. Phil Knight has just started the idea with it, just shook hands with Bill Bowerman, right? This is in 1965, so not too much is going on with BRS. All they pretty much have is a name at this point, right? And one of the famous things Jeff Johnson actually says is that when Phil Knight was talking to him and talking about how, hey, you know, we can make products, you know, by the athletes, for the athletes, we can really start to mainstream this product, we can really start to be Adidas and Reebok at their own game, right? You know, Jeff is starting to listen, he's like, oh man, this is amazing, I want to be part of this company, right? And then Phil Knight kind of breaks the news to him. So Jeff Johnson goes, okay, you know, how much am I starting for? I'm getting my master's at Stanford, right? So I gotta be paid a lot, about how much am I starting for? And uh, Phil Knight goes, well, you have to be ready to work uh, just for bread and water, so nothing. Right? So we, this guy, Jeff Johnson, he had to have enough confidence in himself and the company to be able to leave whatever master's program he had in Stanford and start with this BRS company that he's never heard of, right? But he did. All because of the faithfulness that Phil Knight put into him. He got to tour Phil Knight's 
garage, which a lot of this stuff was in, and then he kind of looked around and he saw that there was no advertisements. There was no marketing, there were no brochures. So he kind of looks to Phil, at this point, right, 66 right now, 1966, and he's like, hey, we don't have any real marketing stuff. How, how are people gonna know about our brand? What are we gonna do? And I was just like, oh, you know, we got a couple of guys, but we haven't really found anything just yet, right? So thank goodness that Jeff Johnson is the genius that he is because he was actually, uh, has a really, really big passion for uh, photography. So every single photo in the 1960s was photographed by Jeff Johnson, okay? So the first employee who's gonna start retail, who was gonna make shoes, the first job that he had was to take pictures for the company. And once he took pictures for the company, who was to put in the catalogs, who was to develop the advertisements, who was to contact the prints for the newspapers, who was to design the BR symbol, and all of those things. While Phil Knight and Bill Byron kind of hashed out the product things that were going on, he really kind of took hold of the company in 1966 to kind of make sure the nation knew who we were, right? So we have a couple of things going on. Not only do we have Jeff Johnson, who just started with uh, BRS, slash Nike, but we have this guy where BRS would never be where what it was, and eventually Nike would never be what it was, if Jeff Johnson did not take a hold of it and start snapping photos for it. At this point, there was no such thing as BRS stores, none. All there was was Anasuka Tigers, there was Phil Knight, Jeff Johnson, slaying them out of the back of the van, right? There was nothing really seeming to say this was a company. So, so Phil Knight brings them, he's like, hey, we gotta have a store. So the Ford store opens at uh, opens in Santa Monica, California, on Pico Boulevard. Has anybody seen this? The one with the mattress in the back from Scooby Doo? Yeah, that bad boy. So he has this, and he actually has shoes in the back, and he's going track to track to track to talk about these shoes with all the runners, right? So if we, I, I know this doesn't really look as much because it's just a van, but if we talk about grassroots marketing, this is the thing that we really talk about. When we talk about athletes making products for athletes, we talk about this guy who ran all four years of high school, is an avid runner, who runs in the shoe, going to track meets, popping up, I mean, I mean just, just think if you're a track athlete, right? You get done with your race, walking off to go grab a great rate, and this guy pulls up in a love bug and pops open his trunk with a thing full of shoes. What are you thinking? You're like, I don't know what this guy's doing right now, right? But it was just that very authentic connection that as soon as the athlete is done, let's talk about how that shoe felt for him. Let's talk about how we can redesign it. And so, while the, Narke, while the um, Blue Ribbon Sports Research Lab was kind of in development, then this, he kind of took over the product testing within the East Coast as well. Uh, one of the really, really cool things was that once this thing was done, Jeff went back to the uh, West Coast and saying, all great companies always have two syllable names. And he was looking at this. He's like, why saw? Right? That's the first thing he said, like, why saw? He's like, man, I gotta think of something good. It's Dimension 6. Nobody wants to get Dimension 6 shoes. It just doesn't work out, right? So he has this two-syllable thing in his mind, it's laying down, and he has, this, he has this image of the goddess of victory. He has this image of the goddess of victory, and he's like, I got it. So he calls, he calls over to his people, and he's like, hey, you know what? I think I have the greatest name ever, and I think it's gonna work. But now it's like, what, let me, let me hear it. He goes, Nike. But now it's like, I don't, I don't think I like that name, one bit, right? Let's look at it now. If, we, if you walked into the brand experience store of Dimension 6, Twilight Zone, it's not like you're coming here to shop in for shoes, you might be coming in for something else, right? But it was, it was Nike, that's the name that he thought of, right? That morning, there were boxes of Nike shoes being made with the names of Dimension 6. So when he thought about this name, last little bit, of, last little bit of, of room to be able to create this name, he made it, and the boxes switched over to Nike, and it was history ever since. So at this point in time, we have Jeff Johnson, the visionary. We have Jeff Johnson, the grassroots guy. We have Jeff Johnson as the product guy. We have Jeff Johnson as this retail guy, right? How many, how many, how many, how many of you guys knew this during working camp? We went over Jeff Johnson. We talked about naming as the first employee, right? He's the first employee for a reason. We talked about him in history and heritage for a reason because he did so much for Blue Ribbon Sports and so much for early Nike that that is the company as to what we are now, right? Think about, it. think about Eakins, right? What do they do? Right? They go to the football fields, they go to the soccer fields, they talk about the product. Like, oh, this new technology is really cool. Let me show you. Right? Jeff Johnson was doing this in the 60s. This guy was doing it in the 60s. Right? So we're talking about who the first retail person, let's talk about who the first real Eakin was. Jeff Johnson. Just to put a cap on this guy that not only was he a genius when it came to Nike as far as sales as well, but also he is truly the first person to bleed orange. Why? Because Bill Bowerman and Bill Knight created Orange, but this is the guy that first bought into the system. First guy, he tasted it cool, he was like, I wanna make this a profession, I wanna make this my life, right? 
So if we talk about the first person to do it, it was really Jeff Johnson.